Hi, Paul Wallace here with Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, and today we're in Pennsylvania with Tim Stark from Eckerton Hill Farm. Hi, Tim. How are you? Good. Thanks how are for you? joining us today. Great, yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming Good. out. It's a nice day. It is indeed. Yeah. So we're in front of um, Tim's tomato patch right now, and Tim, you're growing how many tomatoes this year? Uh, about thirty thousand plants this 30, year. Thirty thousand. Mostly plants. heirloom varieties. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just about virtually all heirloom varieties. And a lot of your, ver your a lot of your crop goes into Union Square uh, Farmers Market. In to the market in New York. New in York fact, City. yeah, we're there today. Wayne, who works for me, went in today. I'm I'm trying to stay back at the farm and get everything ready for fall. So, out of these thirty thousand plants, what is your favorite variety this year? Um, this year I've really liked. Uh, it kind of. For me, it depends on what time of year. Usually early on when they first come in, I love Cherokee Purple. It just has a great, great flavor. Right. Later in the season, I'd say now I like the green ones more. Uh, green Giant, hmm. uh, Aunt Ruby's German Green, right. and the pink ones, Radiator Charlie's Mortgage Lifter, Brandywine. Right. Uh, I like those. Um, maybe a little earlier, I would like the, uh, before it starts getting cool at night, I, it, it's, it really is funny because there is a time there's a time for each tomato variety. Right. I like before it starts getting cool at night. I really like uh, the striped ones. The mm -hmm. um, um, let's see, there's uh, you know hillbilly or right. or striped German or yeah, right. because uh, they're real fruity. They like uh, and they really benefit from the heat the way a peach benefits from the heat. So Tim, what is your favorite way when you bring the tomatoes to the kitchen? What is your favorite way of eating these tomatoes and preparing them? Okay, um, usually, well, first of all, I always get the, I eat the splits, the ones that aren't going to market is what I eat, right. and they're actually very good often. Um, uh, I, I don't do much, and that's the greatest, that's the great thing about the tomatoes. I, I always say that's why I think I sell a lot to restaurants in the summertime, because they don't create any heat in the kitchen, and right. really all you have to do is dice them up, or slice them, nice big slices. Um, it's great if you have heirlooms, because you have all these different colors to right. sort of appeal to the eye, as well as the palate. Mix it with a little olive oil, maybe a little salt. If they're good enough, they don't even need the salt. A little right. olive oil, a little, little bit of balsamic vinegar. Um, if you have cheese, uh, goat cheese especially from a local farmer, right. um, that, you know, just cut, cut up a few cubes of that and, and throw it on, to mix it all together, a little bit of basil. Um, or, I mean, I, I gotta admit, I eat a lot of tomatoes just, just the way you eat an right, apple. Right, they're so right, good right. In, the, in the heat, in the summer heat. Because I'm also very busy. I mean, I usually and and uh, I off, I often cut slices up on a sandwich, just a tomato and mayonnaise sandwich on mm -hmm. toast. It's, it's just, hard to beat. It's yeah, it's hard to beat. It's like I don't even have the time. Yeah. I don't even have the time for to to you know cook the bacon. It's just like yeah, it just does it. Right. You know, just toast it. So Tim, do you have any hints or growing tips for wannabe tomato farmers or wannabe tomato growers? Um, yeah, sure. The tomato is really a. Uh, Tomato will grow like a weed. It's pretty easy to grow as so long as you you have to give it a lot of sunlight, as much sunlight as you can. We 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 they get all day sunlight where I where I grow them. You have to give them well drained soil. Okay. Um, they will grow like a weed, but they will get you know, if they're in a wet area, they will not they will not like it. They don't like wet feet. They don't like too much rain. They like like they like a good breeze. So when I bought this farm, the one thing that told me. I was going to buy this farm every time I looked at it before I bought it was that there was always a breeze going through and that dries the leaves off. A tomato will grow if you've, uh, probably anyone, everyone's always, uh, who hasn't seen a, a cherry tomato growing out of a crack in, in the right, sidewalk? Right, they right, will right. grow anywhere. Right. But uh, you got to keep them from, you got to keep them healthy. That's, that's the trick and so breezes, sunlight, uh, you know, and if it is very dry, then you have to make sure they're getting some water once a week because otherwise you get blossom end rot. And this was a year where that was my job to come up here in the middle of the night and change irrigation lines to make sure everything got enough water because we don't have a great supply of water. So when it is really, really dry, you don't want to, you don't want them you don't want it. You, they need to get some water somehow, right. and they need to get a steady supply of water, and they need to have. Uh, they need to have some calcium in the soil too. It's really important. A good and and well, as far as the soil, if you look at my soil, there's there's you see straw and there's right. a lot of compost, a lot of organic matter. Uh, to me, the organic matter has all the nutrients. It has all the natural minerals that flavor the tomato that that give it all of its nutrients. Uh, a friend of mine calls it the built-in salt flavor. It's just right. from having all these minerals because you have a lot of organic matter in the soil. Yeah, this is a sign of a, a good a, a field that's in good balance too. We don't spray anything, but we get these tomato hornworms, and but they are never 
a real big nuisance for us, mostly because soon after the hornworms appear, the braconid wasp lays all these eggs on it, and the little baby wasps come out and sort of parasitize. This, this one's on the way out, so what we do when we see this is we just pull the leaf off, we pull, pull the hornworm off and put them on the ground somewhere because you can see the little, there's a couple of little wasps being hatched there and they, uh, they basically, this hornworm will be yellow and dead in about a week. So that's the way nature hand, handles it. So it's better for us if we were to use a spray, a pesticide, we'd probably, you know, kill, kill the as many wasps as we would the right. worms and we'd rather keep it in balance. That's a big zebra, it's, a, it's, it's like a large sized green zebra. Here's an even bigger one. This is even nicer because it has that nice yellow sheen to it. You know it's ripe then. This looks like a persimmon tomato. I, I don't remember planting persimmon, but maybe I did. That must be a pound. Yeah, probably close to it. Close to a pound. Yeah, the bigger ones get to be two, two and a half pounds. This looks like a green giant, which you can almost not even tell when it's ripe. It's you, it's just by feel. That's what. That's how uh, most of the people that work here are pretty experienced with tomatoes. They know when they're ripe. Otherwise, you pick these things green. And this is sort of the problem with cross-country travel of some of these tomatoes. I, I've had people tell me, you know, green zebra, that's a terrible tomato. It's green, it's rock hard. I'm like, well, it's because because they get sh sh when they get shipped across country, they pick them green and they never turn ripe. They never blush yellow like this. Okay. But look at this. But see, here's the problem. When you wait, too, you get, you know, this will never be able to sell. This is for us to eat. <laughs> right. So when you wait, there's always something's going to dig into it before you do. What is this one, Tim? That's a black pear. Black pear. Yeah, which I've been growing for a long time. I originally got the seed for that from Glen Drowns out in Kalamas, Iowa. It's a pretty yeah. tomato. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, it really looks like a pear. It's not like the yellow pear, which is pear shaped. It really looks like a a pear. So Tim, when you go to Union Square Farmers Market in New York City, you must have a lot of uh, restaurateurs that are buying from you. Yeah, we do. In fact, from the very first, the very first year we had, when we were there 15 years ago, I made friendships and started doing business with chefs that I'm still doing business today. Wow. Um, you know, uh, Daniel Ballou, Bill Telepan, John George Vong and Richten, um, all of Mario Batali's restaurants and people and you know Mario Batali was uh, he was at the stand that first year the flowering that culinary flowering has sort of made it really possible for a lot of farmers like me so this is another variety I haven't actually tasted this before it's called a purple calabash and it's got interesting scallop features to it yeah it's a, and uh, people uh, comments vary on that I'd be curious to know what you thought of the flavor of that tomato oh, let me try it Boy, it's interesting. It's a little more, it's a little sour than a, than a regular tomato. I like it though. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a slightly underripe, I think. Right. Um, but it, yeah, it does have a, a it does have a, a little bit of a tang to it. It's hmm. still rich though, right? The, it's, the, it's, yeah. yeah, it's really, I can imagine it now on a plate mm -hmm. with other tomatoes around it. Cool. Thank you. So uh, this is this is our secret to good tasting tomatoes. This is what we spread on the fields in the in the spring, and the combination of that with the clover, which you can sort of see the clover, the little uh, the little clover flowers budding up there. Uh, a lot of you know clover and also other things like uh, um, rye and vetch and uh, triticale. That's 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 all we use. That's all we feed our tomatoes, um, and that's enough. Um, we don't need any chemical fertilizers. We just um, the combination of that is what uh, what uh, brings out the flavor in the tomatoes. Mm -hmm.